Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Thursday, November 15th, 2012, and I'm Darko. I'm going to cover the Middle East, mostly Israel. Uh, that's the biggest news right now, and I wanted to get to it yesterday. Uh, but I covered the day prior to that, a lot of what's happening. So you can check out, uh, what would that be, Tuesday's video uh, to get more background on this. The first article I have up is uh, going to set the theme of the rest of the news uh, report. Israel ranks as world's most militarized nation. They top the list of the world most militarized nations according to the latest global militarization index released Tuesday by the Bonn International Center for Conversion. At number 34, Israel's main regional rival, Iran, is far behind. Indeed, every other Near Eastern country, with the exception of Yemen and Qatar, is more heavily militarized than the Islamic Republic according to the index. Singapore ranked second, followed by Syria, Russia, Jordan, and Cyprus. Six of the top ten states, including Israel, number one, Syria, four, Jordan, five, Kuwait, seven, Bahrain, nine, and Saudi Arabia, ten, are located in the Middle East, while yet another of Iran's neighbors, Azerbaijan, made its first entry into the militarized elite at number eight. Uh, with the exception of Syria, all these countries are Western um, slash Zionist um, pro-countries, so especially Azerbaijan, but right now they're actually in protest in that country. Israel has been known to directly uh, uh, trade weapons with that country as well. It says, in contrast, both Sub-Saharan Africa and Latin America are relatively low on the index. Among the United States Embassy Tel Aviv security message for the U.S. citizens November 14, 2012, citizens of the U.S. are encouraged to exercise caution and take appropriate measures to ensure their safety and security in light of the escalating level of violence in Gaza and southern Israel. They should pay close attention to their surroundings and news reports and follow the civil, basically, home front guard, civil defense guidance. It also says that uh, they should seek out locations of the nearest bomb shelters. Israel approved killing of Hamas commander amid talks on long-term truce. Israeli peace negotiator Baskin said Jabari's assassination killed the possibility of achieving a truce. Like I just covered, they don't want that. Um, peace for Israel is constant conflict. Just hours before Israel assassinated Hamas commander on Tuesday, he received the draft proposal of permanent truce agreement with Israel, but Israel approved the airstrikes anyways, choosing escalation over resolution. Israeli peace activists uh, told Haaretz uh, that senior officials in Israel knew about the pending truce agreement, but nevertheless approved the assassination, presumably knowing it would terminate the truce and escalate the conflict with Gaza. That this blood could have been spared and those who have made it the, the decision must be judged by the voters, but to my regret they will get more votes because of this. Lastly, even when Hamas was pulled into participating in rocket fire, its rockets would always land in open spaces, and that was intentional, Baskin said. Next up, Israeli warships fire missiles on Gaza after deadly airstrikes. So, yep, this is as Israel launches a major military offensive against the Palestinian uh, enclave. Israel kills 15 Palestinians in 24 hours, including senior Hamas commander. It says Tel Aviv has given Prime Minister Netanyahu, as well as other ministers for the military and foreign affairs, the authority to decide on expanding the offensive against Gaza. So just like um, Russia and other countries, I think it was Qatar, um, and you have the United Nations, it's all just kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, talk. UN Ambassador Susan Rice defended Israeli offensive uh, against Palestinians. Then next up we have Israel kills teacher working with UN agency. The UN uh, agency assisting Palestinian refugees says an Israeli airstrike on the north of Gaza Strip has killed one of its teachers. Hamas announces it is now an open war with Israel from the 14th. As expected, the escalation out of Gaza has been fast and furious, with Al Arabia reporting that the Hamas response to the operation that Israel has codenamed Operation Pillar of Cloud, that's what it's called, Operation Pillar of Cloud, which an IDF spokesman has clarified Israel is ready to escalate into a ground operation into Gaza if needed, is that Hamas is now in open war with Israel. So it says Israel has declared war on Gaza and they will bear the responsibility for the consequences. It says uh, from Zero Hedge, stay tuned folks because this may get very messy very quickly. Now if only the U.S. military wasn't currently the functional equivalent of a grotesque reality uh, gong show, and then here's a picture of Gaza. 
straight from the Israeli Defense Force, which may uh, be engaged in live tweeting a war for the first time in history. All options are on the table, says the uh, IDF. If necessary, the IDF is ready to initiate a ground operation in Gaza. But uh, it's not exactly true because the uh, mercenaries and the terrorists uh, that the Western powers have used in Libya and now Syria and other countries uh, were using tweets. They were actually uh, tweeting pictures of dead bodies um, like it was a show or something. Uh, Hamas claims missile strike on Tel Aviv and IDF slams it as propaganda. So Hamas arm wing claims to have shelled the occupied city of Tel Aviv. In quotes, if true, this will have been the first Hamas missile to hit Israel's largest city. An Israeli defense minister says strikes are just the beginning of the IDF operations. Prime Minister says Israel will not accept attack tax on its citizens. So, of course, they start it off, they kick it off, they provoke it, then they play the uh, the victim. Israeli troops are massed on the Gaza border and poised for invasion. They're not the only ones that are on the border, too. Remember, I've covered that about in Golan Heights. Um, this was happening a month or two ago, and this was part of the operation, was to, um, was to get Syria kind of trapped, uh, bogged down uh, with the Israeli front, a two-front, and, uh, of course, Turkey. Israel killed the military commander, as we know, and it says Israeli troops have massed on the Gaza border, poised for an invasion. This is the, the latest surge of violence between Israel and Gaza militants occurred after Israel shot and killed at least two Gazans and intruded into Gaza with tanks and bulldozers. In response, the Gaza militants fired a missile at an Israeli army jeep, wounding four soldiers, to which Israel responded with an extended bombardment of airstrikes. Finishing up, it says, but the Israeli leadership continues to try and claim Hamas initiated the flare-up in violence, issuing the same statements of war rhetoric as always. That's kind of interesting. I'll keep going here. Netanyahu said that no country in the world would accept a situation in which rockets are fired at citizens and that Israel can't accept it either. In the same vein, Netanyahu did not explain why Hamas should accept a situation in which airstrikes targeting uh, killings and total economic warfare are unleashed on Palestinians for years on end. So everybody just ignores that in the West, especially. Just totally disregard what's been going on over the years and day by day, you know, that we cover this here and all the uh, the news outlets about what's happening against the Palestinians. And everybody knows that Israel is the aggressor, and yet uh, when Israel wants to ramp up the violence, uh, you know, pre-election time, uh, everybody just, you know, there's so many people that are on their side. Inner cabinet okays mobilization, reserve troops if needed. So they gave authorization on Wednesday for the mobilization of military reserves if required to press and air assault against Hamas for Gaza Strip. They agreed to allow the IDF to enlist reserve forces in accordance with the need of authorization of the defense minister. Then we have Israel needs Obama not to attack Gaza. So... Middle East expert says Israel would not dare attack Gaza and carry out war crimes against the besieged people without the green light from uh, U.S. President Barack Obama personally. Israel has launched a brutal campaign of aggression against the people of Gaza, and according to human rights activists, this Adi Mormek at the scene, hospitals in Gaza are overloaded. Young children and infants are already among the dead. So it also goes on, it says the Pentagon has already stated that they will stand by their Israeli partners, of course, along with the UN, uh, UN ambassador Suzanne Rice. Prime Minister thanks Obama for supporting Israel's right to defense from the 15th. On Wednesday night, he spoke on a telephone with Barack Obama and Vice President and the EU Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton. He was also scheduled to speak with Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary. So it goes on and he says he thanks them for the them taking the position that Israel had the right to defend itself. Anti-war activists protest outside Barack's home, the defense minister about 100 activists chanted money for welfare, not war, outside the defense minister's home at, as Gaza operations take off. So um, it's the same thing, you know, in other countries. Uh, the people will protest against what their governments are doing in their name, the blood that's on their hands, and uh, they don't really care. Um, you know, they'll just go ahead and, 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 and throw support, public support for this, these atrocities. UK foreign minister takes side of Israel on airstrikes. Foreign Minister uh, William Haig has blamed the Palestinian resistance movement, uh, it says here, Hamas, for escalating violence in the region despite Israel's unrelenting strikes on the Gaza Strip. He utterly condemns the rocket attacks on southern Israel from Hamas. So just like the Egyptian leader uh, in Qatar, 
They're doing the same thing. They're playing that card. Uh, Qatar wants Israel punished for Gaza attacks. Said on Wednesday, condemn the Israeli attacks on the Gaza Strip. And uh, he says, I condemn in the name of Qatar, this filthy crime must not pass without punishment. So, uh, but uh, just recently, the Qatar's emir visit to Gaza, pledging $400 million to Hamas. So pretty, pretty interesting. And uh, actually, remember, they were up there basically forming, they're forming the opposition to Assad's government in Syria. But to tie all this together, what's also happening in Palestine just recently after he made this visit was that the Syrian rebels, among other entities, probably, you know, uh, steered by intelligence agencies of the West, either Mossad, SAS, or CIA, uh, were going into Palestine and, and, and taking pro-Palestinians, uh, Syrians, in Syria and uh, attacking them. You know, so in return, the Syrian government then, you know, uh, basically closed down and, and took control of that area. But it just goes to show you that something doesn't something doesn't smell right, you know. Uh, why would they go one way and then go the other way? You know, fighting Assad with the same people that would be fighting with Assad would be with, with Gaza, right? So, so more empty talk. Egyptian president condemns Israel's aggression in Gaza and um, doesn't really mean much, you know. European Union approves financial aid package for Egypt. That's right. The EU approved a 5 billion euro package for Egypt to help rebuild its economy after the uh, Western-induced um, intelligence-operated Arab Spring that uh, brought down Mubarak, who was kind of a thorn in their side, I think. Um, and remember, the U.S. pays, you know, that aid to Egypt is really to pay them off so that they don't attack Israel. But they have to have a good puppet there, too. Egypt asked IMF for $4.8 billion in aid, and this was from August 22nd, so they got more cash. And uh, remember this, U.S. struggles to install proxy brotherhood in Egypt. From Egypt to Syria, Muslim Brotherhood does the West bidding, now joined overt State Department fronts. So, you know, it's a, it's a Western proxy, Muslim Brotherhood. So this is all like I've talked about before. This is all about um, having these uh, enemies in conflict uh, around surrounding Israel. It emboldens them. And right now they're trying to, like I said, uh, the, the plan is to have Israel cut, be cut uh, from the umbilical cord to the U.S. and to expand outwards. Which is why it's so convenient now that they're saying Obama has icy relations uh, with Netanyahu. Egyptians protesters demand end to uh, ties with Israel. I've already covered this before, but it just goes to show you that the people in Egypt don't want uh, any ties with Israel. Israel ministry paper proposes toppling Abbas over U.N. bid. A position paper by Israel's foreign ministry proposes uh, basically ousting or toppling uh, President Mahmoud Abbas if Palestinians' bid for UN non-member status is approved. Then to Syria, Syrian rebels expand holdings and take most villages along Israeli frontier. Israeli officials downplay cross-border shells. So Israeli officials are now once again downplaying the recent stray mortar shells crossing from Syrian government-held territory into occupied Golan Heights saying that the mortars are imprecise and are just missing across the de facto border. They don't want to admit that these uh, rebel terrorists in Syria, um, who they're helping to support, are actually firing mortars uh, over into their border. It says this may be a bigger problem going forward, however, as rebel factions take over more and more villages of Syrian Golden Heights along the 1967 line. Along the Turkish border, increased rebel territorial claims have led to increasing military strikes against the region. So the Turkish border is more vital uh, to the rebels, uh, as it is across that border that many foreign fighters infiltrate and many foreign arms flow. Actually, they go to Turkey right over the border to get armed. The Israeli frontier is much smaller, but with the rebels blasting Israel as pro-Assad, their presence could be destabilizing there as well. Now, I've covered this as well. According to the Brookings Institute uh, uh, paper, they want to destabilize that area and put pressure on the Assad government. So when you see uh, propaganda like this, this information like Free Syrian Army accuses Israel of aiding the regime and Assad being the most loyal ally, you know it's BS because Israel has every motivation to get Assad, who's anti-Zionist, out of there. It's a tactic that Israel used. They cultivate and exploit hatred says because any regime Israel feigned support for would be instantly poisoned by a political touch of death. Whether it was Mubarak in Egypt 
or Gaddafi in Libya, the people suddenly turned once they heard that he was possibly an Israeli uh, supporter or Zionist supporter. Thank you.